All right. Uh, Snow said he was AFK, but I'm guessing he'll be back by the time we actually start. Okay, so this is a completely different map. Not a balanced um, repost map. North, south, one DD that can smoke with triple caps. I think it's triple caps. And they and they get, and the map's relatively close-ish. So the intention is, um, games are best of three in a in a tournament setting, uh, and what you do is you you. Uh, as the teams pick your map and you pick your spawn. That's the idea. So my team would pick either the first or the second map, like a toy flip to see who goes first or something. So I would say, ah, oh, I want to play neighbors and I want the north spawn, okay? So that means you get neighbors, you get north, and that's your home field advantage. You get neighbors, you get north. And the enemy team on the second battle says, okay, well, I want trident and I want south. That's their home field advantage. Or maybe they want neighbors on north as well, right? That's theoretical. So if you pick like a map pool of like, I don't know, like each round gets like a map pool of five maps. So that way, like on, on, on the round of 16, you have these five maps to pick from, okay? And then so the two maps are picked, or maybe even just one map is picked and played twice. And then if it goes to a tiebreaker, it's repost, all right? And then you go to... Uh, the from the the, the quarterfinal the semi the round of sixteen you go to like the quarterfinals or, or or the semifinals and then that's also got a map pool of five or whatever and then and that way you you're being fresh and that you've got different maps you can't just practice one map the whole time and you still get that kind of home field advantage and you still got that tiebreaker on repost uh, repost or ocean is the two options I, I would have thought um, because those are mirrored maps that nobody gets an advantage in either spawn so that's that's the mentality I'm going at, at the moment. <clears throat> but what we wanted to do was we wanted to test setups here today, and I think we're on to something at the moment. Uh, prob C question mark? Like... Getting that into B and then taking B is, is awkward because you get fired up by the battleship and everything. So, but if you if we go to Charlie instead, I want to force these two down so I don't get plane detected. Also going C. <clears throat> oh, shit. Oh, oh, that was good. Check that out. Right. Oh, thank you, bud. Or Bob, I apologize. That was its, um, again, I appreciate the Twitch Prime. It's very nice of you. And as far as that fighter element, was chasing him so he couldn't go left or right and then straight into him. So that, that was a cool little maneuver, I reckon. So this is dangerous because they, again, are going for the same freaking cap as us, which I guess makes it interesting. Okay, I'm going to try and get round here and drop from behind because they've got CV pressure on the front. Oh, torp drops okay. Saipan, Yumkai is, in, in, is falling behind at the moment, so yeah. Oh, nope. Not gonna happen. Let's keep chasing. I'll catch him eventually. He used to move. Yep. Exit straight for free. <sighs> Good turn on by him. Oh, that's a lot of bombers. It's 
So these two fighters are down by the south, but it's kind of relevant. Well, the bombers have got a free run on the top there. That's a lot of bombers incoming right now. Uh, I need to try and get around, I guess. We got the cap initially, but... So I feel like I've gone maybe around the... Okay, we can keep going, keep going. Maybe try and hit Yunkai, I reckon. Looks like the fires are being stretched. If he takes a lot of damage, I'll go for him instead, but I don't want to really be over Yunkai's AA bubble for that long. I know that's not going to happen. Wow. Okay, so that's the start. He's, oh, I, know, I should probably don't want to go too far. I want to slow down. So Yumi's vulnerable, but here come the enemy torps. I think better fire play by our part is, is making a difference. Torps are going to be spotted. Go away, fly. Um, but it's going to be more, more of a zonal thing. Leon says no. <laughs> What's the odds that we go for the same cap twice? I guess maybe that's just the nature of the map. You always go for a certain cap as that makes it to a kind of a head-on fight. Oh, I didn't know his second CV died as well. I didn't know man died. I guess he must have... F oh. Just outside the smoke field. Thank you, Kurt. I'm a really good strafe. Yeah, okay, here we go. I think that's it for EXO. See, the lethality is still there with the bombers, right? But I think by throwing the destroyer into the mix and throwing into the caps, what was happening previously was that people would group together as a team of four and they wouldn't separate as a team of four. So the cumulative AA of four ships kind of walking in the same area with the BB as the, as the kind of the following point. Uh, was very difficult to bomb because it was easier to protect. But if you throw in uh, multiple capture points, then you can go for different caps. Maybe the BB and the destroyer play together. It means people are perhaps slightly more separated on the map. Um, yeah, maybe that 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 seems really dynamic and different. <laughs> he nostered. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna go well. Oh, we don't have any bombers for you though, so. It's like, it's dangerous to get close until the BB dies. So yeah, th there's like a risk reward system. I think yeah, go going with uh, caps and going with like uh, one DD that is allowed to use smoke, but no defensive fires is, is a cool idea. I think that's what we're gonna go with. As I keep repeating myself. Oh, you jammy get it didn't activate. Oh, that was close as well. Oh, but it's too late! Oh, one too many!
So rather than three destroyers going one destroyer with smoke is a good idea. Poor DD got uh, <laughs> torp from all directions. Yeah, groped or torped. Uh, gorped. I agree. Um, so I need to look at all the different maps and like pick pick some map pools. But I think we copy the exact same rule set more or less from the previous round, how the teams work and all that type of stuff. And then more reserves. I remember people asking they wanted more reservists. So I'm thinking if we're going to have a team of five, the, you know, five active players, then you would want two spare reservists. That way you would have seven rewards, as it were, for that team. You'd have seven people in the team. That I think Wargaming would be on board with that for prizes. Rather than four and one, we'll have uh, five and, and, and two. So we'll have a team of seven, that way. a collective team size of seven. And that way people can mix around. Because if you've got three CV players, uh, or, or BB player, or DD player, you know, you, you, you want... Well, then again, maybe you want a spare DD, BB, and CV player. So maybe maybe you want groups of eight, five active, and three spares. We'll see. All right. We'll see. I mean, what do you guys think? Um, well, they're still in the training battle. They're still in the battle. Um, and then other elements were why tier seven though the most powerful CVs. The reason we're doing this at tier seven is defensive fires. That's the main reason right now. Uh, once you get to tier 8, defensive fires come in. And if you're going to do it tier 8, with, if you're going to play with defensive fires, you might as well go straight up to tier 10 with overwhelming firepower. Um, uh, quick question. Who here has a T10 